How's everyone doing today? This is Chopping It Up Hardcore with Hal Capone, special edition style, with my honored guest, ja Josh Jakubowski. Like, super special guest. So amped to talk to him. Um, yeah, in the most incredible bands of all time, Neil Perry, Joshua Fit for Battle, Hot Cross. I'm going to grab him right now. All right, Josh, I'm grabbing you. Hold on. Pete, what's up? Oh, hold on. Yep. You're, <laughs> we're good. Hey, hey, we made it. Finally. Sweet. Hold on. I got to tweak my, tweak my view a little bit. What's going on? What's happening? Hey, thank we you. We did it. We yeah, did it. We did it. We made it work. <laughs> well, what time is it? We're only nine minutes yeah. late. My bad. Nine minutes. <laughs> um, I would just want to thank you so much for doing this. Like, um, big oh. shout out to Dave Norman for for linking us up. Um, and super amped to have you. I've missed you so much. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen your face, and and, and it's just a, an honor to to speak with you about. I I appreciate it, man. I appreciate all the stuff you've been doing. I love the videos. You know, I found I randomly came across it. And I'm like, is that fucking Larry Everett? <laughs> <laughs> that started it all, and it's been awesome, man. I, I appreciate all the support, man. It's been it's been really really cool. Uh, it's crazy to get back into it. It's it's so strange but cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm glad I'm glad you you made an Instagram and and you know got to link up with like a bunch of people that you hadn't maybe talked to in a while it's, and stuff like that. So it's pretty crazy. Like I found my best friend from high school I haven't talked to in like 20 years. Like it's been pretty cool. It's yeah. been pretty cool. That's awesome. Pretty surprising, but. I don't know why I waited so long. I don't know what I was thinking. But. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you uh, talked to anybody from bands and stuff like through Instagram? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hassan guys, found them pretty quick. Love those guys. Uh, Ruheda. Um, who else? Uh, Mike from Page 99 reached out. It's, it's pretty cool, man. It's just cool to reconnect with everybody from that time, see how everybody's doing. Yeah. It seems like everybody's doing well. Everybody's got the family thing going on, which is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. it's cool. Um, you, now you you're still uh, running Cannon Road, right? So that was my dad's house. So that was my dad's garage. He built a studio in the garage, mm -hmm. and all the bands would practice there. Like all the bands I was in practice there. Life Once Lost practice there yeah. for a while. Um, and I kind of made like a home studio there. And it was kind of like a – it wasn't like a real studio. It was kind of like a demo kind of situation. Yeah. But we could get everything done there. So we did that forever. Uh, I would say that up until about maybe 2000 and shit, I can't even remember, maybe 2005, seven, something around there. And then I started working for a guy named Brian Schechter who had a studio in New Jersey and I started working for them, working there. Um, and then now I just have a home studio. Nice. Nice. Yeah, which I'm in right now. Yeah. So. yeah. Life once lost. Now, um, uh, superstitions of the sky. Um, his name's Vadim. Is that his name? Yeah, so yeah that's my he, was, he was the original guitar player in a, white, a Life Once Lost, wasn't he? Exactly. Yeah, he, I think he started the band. I think he was a founding member. He's a good friend of mine, amazing guy, incredible musician. Um, and yeah, we, you know, that, so I guess we're kind of going off yeah, yeah. a little bit, not in order, but, but Superstitions kind of started. That's really like Andy Lowe gets the credit for that. So he was my roommate at the time, and it was just, Stuff that I was playing around, just you know, just playing around at home, and he's like, "Dude, I'll you know, I'll put that out," and it was kind of like, "Wow, all right, it's kind of embarrassing, but I guess we'll do that." And so it was really him, and it was me and Kevin Hardy uh, from um, JFFB, good friend of mine, and we basically just went in, re recorded the record with Steve uh, from Sage Show, yep. and uh, and then Andy put it out, and then later on, uh, me and Vadim did a record together, and it kind of became more of like a more serious project. It was always kind of just a side thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, but yeah, life was, uh, uh, he started life was lost. He was also in this day forward too. Yeah. This day forward. Yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great musician. Great yeah. guy. Incredible musician. Um, all right. I didn't mean to jump ahead, but no, we'll, you're good. No, I just wanted to, wanted to yeah. set that straight. You yeah, know? Yeah. Um, we'll go back to the early days. Um, I always ask this when, when I did talks, um, when you first got into music as a kid, what kind of grabbed you? And then it's kind of a two-part question. What, like, 
how did you gravitate towards heavy music after you first were initially, you know, right. Music. Sure. It's, it's funny for me, man. Like I had a, an interesting child. I mean, I had a great childhood, but I had an interesting situation where uh, my parents divorced early and I, my dad was a school administrator. So I went to the school that he worked at, which was, so I would ride with him to school like since first grade. Yeah. So first grade, to like I could drive right so that entire time I we you know I was growing up on the Beatles the band Bob Dylan Chicago you know John Lennon you know I was I was brought up on the best pop music ever yeah. made you know, since I was like six you know what I mean so like I knew all the Beatles lyrics when I was like eight years old like every freaking song yeah. so it started early you know I was a huge Beatles fan um, you know, like Chicago, the band, all that great stuff from the sixties. And then later on, you know, it was like guns and roses, you know, and, and when I was like, you know, 1988 and all yeah. that stuff. So I had like a clear kind of path for music. It was all that early pop stuff. My mom listened to like great Motown stuff, earth, wind and fire. So I had like the best music coming in my ears when I was a little kid. Yeah. You know? So that kind of started the whole music thing. And then in high school, skating, it was all all the pop punk stuff, Op IV, you know, um, face to face, no FX, all that stuff. I love that shit, yeah. man. So like freshman year, you know, getting into that. So that's really what started the whole punk thing, skating. And I mean, I love that stuff. That was just my shit, you know. Yeah. And then really in high school, the band in still pretty much was the main band, because they were from my high school, John from you and I went to my high school. So the couple of guys went to my school and so it just made it such a different thing because they were from my school. We were actually seeing this band. Yeah. So they were kind of the first three you've been in around. Like, oh, okay, I get this, I get this now. You know, cause they were great. You know, yeah. they were a big band local, but what's big at the time, like 30 kids watching, yeah, you know what I mean? True, true. Like, that was a big, that was was a big thing for me locally, you know. And when it still started, was that kind of your first, uh, you know, like exposure to hardcore shows? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Because I, New Jersey at the time, like in the '90s in New Jersey, there would be a lot of. It was very eclectic. The shows you'd have like a pop punk band, you have a tough guy band, you'd have like a, you know, an indie band. It was the shows were always pretty mixed. Yeah, you know, what I mean? so you got to experience all kinds of stuff. And uh, yeah, that. I would say that was the beginning of it for sure. There, there was a, we were texting, and I wanted to tell you this: the Endeavor story. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's so funny because Endeavor was a big part of it. So, nineteen. I'm so bad with the years, dude. I think this was ninety six. So it was Dead Guy's last show. Dead Guy's last show. My friend takes me to the show. Right. It was Endeavor, Dead Guy, Ignite, Seffler, Pre Saves the Day played uh elliot it was a crazy show right so endeavor goes up and they just destroyed me mm. i've never seen anything like that i was like front row you know they just it was incredible yeah and i remember on the, on the ride home literally saying to my friend like i wouldn't do that like whatever that was like i want to do that yeah and it, was, it was really was that simple like they, it, they just that show blew me away yeah i mean and and, and endeavor is like one of my favorite bands of all time i mean 97 <laughs> went when uh, Constructive Semantics came out. And then also, yeah. like, I was huge into Harvest and Millhouse at the yeah. time. So they, yeah. they all released, like, albums that year. Right. And that Endeavor record, yeah, 90, I mean, I love Crazy. 97, 98, I guess? Yeah, I think it was 97, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I love Crazier Than a yeah. Shithouse Rat, too. That was my jam. Yeah. That was the record for me. Like, I think I just met, like, cool friends in high school. Like it's a guy named Craig Musial, Jay Fulmore. Like these guys knew all this stuff already. So when I met them, they were—I mean, it was just like a free for all, you know? Yeah. And uh, that was the record that that I got into for sure. And again, like they're from New Brunswick, so it's you know it's local. It feels real, you know. It's not just like some band from another land, yeah. you know. You're seeing it. Oh, that's what they're doing. I want to do that. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely. And they had a great message too. Great oh, message yeah. and songs too. So. Mike Olin such a smart guy you know he's so smart um great guy you know but they were amazing i saw them probably 10 times or something yeah so good. You know? and, and were you a big fan of burnt by the sun once once he got into uh, that? <laughs> funny enough i have a funny embarrassing story about burnt by the sun so again andy low andy low getting to me in trouble <laughs> now 
So it's a funny story. I don't think I've ever told a story. So Andy Lowe, they were hired. They were auditioning guitar players, and I tried out for Burnt by the Sun. Really? Yeah. Wow. It, it was. It, it didn't go well. Didn't go yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. So yeah. So Andy's like, dude, they're they're auditioning. You should do it. And I'm like, I don't think I should do that. He's like, just do it. Like, what the hell? I can't. Yeah. Hurt. I kind of knew Dave Whitty a little bit from like playing shows and stuff. So it wasn't going in totally blind, but I went in and I did. I learned all the songs in the wrong tuning. Oh, really? Good, pretty good stuff. <laughs> it was so, it was so, it was it was brutal, but it was a funny story. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow. Okay. <laughs> so speaking of like playing guitar, what got you to want to play, uh, you know, guitar or or you know, just playing an instrument in general? Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles, man. I mean. Like the first stuff I ever learned, like literally the first day, like Christmas Day with the new guitar. Yeah. I had the Beatles broken for me. Like that was, you know, my favorite band. Just all that stuff. And then eventually it got, you know, I, like I love face to face. Uh, anything melodic that was punk was my shit. You yeah. Know? Good arrangements, good vocals, you know. I just, I loved all that stuff. Yeah. But one, you know, I felt like once you kind of establish, like, okay, I like everything, then it's like there's so many bands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And sense field in this band, and you know, it just it doesn't stop. You know, it's just so much great stuff from that time. Yeah, well, that's that's the great thing about like me and you is is we love all genres. Like yeah. I, I I don't solely listen to hardcore, or screamo, or, yeah. or metalcore. I I listen to like you know, I'm when I'm driving, I'm always like. Oh, I'm gonna put on Portishead. I'm gonna put on the Breeders. I'm gonna put on uh, Chica way. Chicago. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's. I'm exactly the same way. And like, there's certain bands that really do kind of cut through. You know, that have that longevity. You know, like here's a perfect example. Like Antioch Arrow, one of the greatest bands that ever existed. Mm, so like that, that's one of the best punk bands of all time. You know, Antioch Arrow. I mean, they got no love. You know, they were around what two years or something. Put out a couple records. I mean, they're one of the best bands of all time. So good. No Doesn't matter what. What, you what what gravitated you towards the the chaotic, screamy, real screamy stuff though? Like what what was it that you wanted to play in a band like Neil Perry that kind of you were like, all right, this is it. Like I want to play chaotic mm -hmm. stuff. It, it's hard to think about specifically exactly at that time, but it would have been. I mean, early Neil Perry was definitely big. Jenny Piccolo. I mean, cut from them. <laughs> them. I mean, Makara was a huge band for me huge one of my favorite bands ever yeah. they were I, those records were amazing yeah like when i found so the band i was like this is it like this is this is it this is the band you know melodic good cool weird aesthetics you know the alien stuff on the albums you know on the records uh portraits of past mm. huge i mean once we heard that it was forget it yeah, I always, I always thought Neil Perry had like in the very beginning, like a little bit of like reversal of man oh, vibes too. Like, yeah, huge, huge reversal of man fan. Uh, yeah, like on the so the summer, what was that summer of ninety nine or two thousand when they did the the ten inch? Yes, yeah, that, yeah. That, I saw them like five times on that summer. Like, oh, so great! They were, live. they were so good. So they're they're probably like the godfathers of all this stuff. One of them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> lot, lot, yeah, oh, definitely. Live, I was blown away. When I first saw them live, I saw them in New Hampshire, I was blown away. Every time. And they were, like, cool guys, you know? Like, I mean, that was the whole thing back then. Like, you know, they played New Brunswick, and we hung out with them for, like, two hours just talking, you know, bullshit. And I was like, man, these guys are so such cool guys, you know? That was the whole thing, too. Every, every band was so cool. Yeah. Such awesome people. Yeah, no. definitely. Matt, Matt and Jeff are like the no. nicest guys of all time. Like, I love those guys. And they were great, you know. And, you know, I feel like they also were kind of, they were like, uh, what's the word? They were doing really well at a time where there wasn't a lot of structure, you know. It was just basement shows and VFW shows, and they were just out there doing it, you know, yeah. just playing it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've seen Matt uh recently on his instagram but he rips it up on uh like uh he does like a lot of bmx like stunts and stuff like that he rips it you up he's like he said that i was curious if he still did that because he used to bring his bike on tour yeah and that was like he's, a he's, curious thing like oh he's not around because he's riding yeah he's, he's a madman every time uh, so funny but they, yeah. they were great 
Definitely, definitely. Um, so before Neil Perry, what was your first band that you played played live in? First band would have been Red All Over. Good band name. Good band name. Ink and Dagger, one of the greats. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was it was Red All Over. It was a high school band, and um, two guys from Neil Perry were in that band. So it was Chris from Neil Perry was in it, and Derek, the original drummer. And it was like you know I think it was like kind of like I don't know, I can't find the demo. I'm sure somebody has it from that time, but I'd love to hear it. I don't even know what it would sound like, but I remember it's kind of sounding like Constantine's and Kathy. Oh, that kind okay. of Just kind of like sloppy, messy. <laughs> you know, we couldn't really, you we weren't very good, but I'd like to hear it now. It might be better than I think, but it was yeah. kind of like that. It was kind of like, like bad frail or something. You know? <laughs> Somebody said sounds like Cap and Jazz. Actually, yeah, like a bad Cap and Jazz though, because Cap and Jazz were incredible. You know, they could actually play. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but dude, we played, we played a cool show. We played Princeton with Seisha and you and I, like in '98. That was like probably the one cool show we played. Yeah. So we played some decent stuff. I don't know if there's a video of that. But hmm. But I remember my friend in high school being like, Sasha's going to rip you guys a new asshole. Oh, God. <laughs> you got, you're not ready. It was so funny. So, uh, yeah. Oh, let me just grab this. All right. Yeah, I, I've, never, I've never heard it. I'm uh, curious to hear what it sounds like. When was the last time you think you had the demo? You just lost it? like. Yeah, like, I don't even know how many we made. I don't think it was many. Like, I want to say maybe 20 or something. Yeah. But it's got to be out there. And I don't know if there's, like, any record of it, like, online, like, Discogs or anything. But, dude, if that is anywhere, that would be incredibly fun. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody has that, so get I think in touch with So Robbie, Robbie, if you're watching this, because I think he's on Instagram, the drummer from that band, he might have it. He might have it. So i got to find him. I'd love to. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. My first band, Last House on the Left, that I sent, sent yeah. you. I don't, have, I don't have the demo tape at all. I, don't, I mean, I'm somebody drunk. sent me I'm Somebody sent me that MP3s, and I just put it on YouTube because I, d I don't have a physical copy of yeah, it. Yeah, I I'm kind of bummed that I didn't, like, make a point to keep that. That would have been cool. Yeah, so um, I wanted to ask you, so after that band, how did Neil Perry start? Like, So let's see. So Neil Perry kind of started – that was like a friend band. Like, So so John from you and I and Neil Still, he's a couple years older than us. He was, I think, like three years older than us. So that's, that's pretty many years at that time, you know? Yeah. We were like 17. He was like 20. So me, Chris, Derek, and John used to hang out all the time. And we basically, John was still you and I, and we're like, hey, let's just do a side band, you know? Yeah. And it wasn't anything super serious. It was just, well, I guess it started with was me, John, and Derek. Derek was on drums. The mm -hmm. original singer of the now. Yeah. Yeah, he, so he was the drummer and we just basically started practicing writing super short songs you know like just kind of doing the jenny piccolo kind of thing yeah. not really to rip them off but it's kind of that vibe you know yeah and then we started and we were lucky because john was already kind of established in the scene so we could get shows super easy we were yeah. super lucky <laughs> yeah i mean the, the first first time i heard neil perry it was just the the seven inch okay. um the first one yeah, uh, ninety nine was did that come out in ninety nine? Yeah, ninety nine. Yeah, so was Ball, yeah which, which was a great label. This guy named uh, Jamil, who I love so much. He, I mean, he was the first guy to like believe in the band, mm. you know, and like you know want to do a record. And he, we did two records with him. And I don't know if we would have done anything if we didn't do anything with him, you know. So I give him a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, that was I. I was blown away. And at that time, there was those. A lot of bands were, you know, coming out in that vein of that genre of music. So, like Page Ninety Nine, Neil Perry, yeah. Joshua yeah. Fit for Battle. Oh yeah, uh, you know, Jerome Stream. Jerome Stream. Yeah, it was. It was just like the shows at that time and the bands that were popping up. You know, Combat Wounded Veteran stuff like that. It yeah. was just such a great time and a great it scene. It, it was almost like lightning in a bottle of those years. Like it, it really was. And I feel like, like, Neil Perry, like, I feel like Neil Perry, like, our kind of bands at that time, we wanted to play shows with, like, the Reversal Men's, and, you know, we wanted to play with those bands, because we loved those bands, we wanted to be in, I just wanted to be a part of it, 
You know what I mean? I just wanted to be all right. We're a part of it. We're doing it. We're we're right there with them. That's all I ever wanted to do. You yeah. know what I mean? And we did it, which is cool. But yeah, like we looked up. I looked up to those bands for sure. You yeah. know, uh, Piccolo, Locust, all that stuff. They kind of paved the way for our next generation of stuff. You know. It, but you're right, there was a million bands. Man. Page 99, Majority Rule, City of Caterpillar, this goes on and on and on, you know? Yeah. And all great bands, you know? Yeah, and great people. Yeah, it was a great time. I, I missed that that time. I mean, I <laughs> love now, nowadays too, but I missed that time a lot. It, yeah. it really meant a lot it, to me. It was a special time, you know? I, I really do feel like that now. I mean, I think then, I don't know if you have quite a perspective on it, but I, I feel like it was a special time. You know, I mean, we're all super young, you know, and it was a weird thing to do. You're just going to get in some van and just drive around the country with like a piece of paper with the guy's name on it and just hopefully it works out. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, you know? yeah. We didn't yeah. have cell phones the entire time we toured. You know? Yeah, I mean, I remember setting up shows and I was sending uh, people yeah. snail, snail mail, like writing letters being like, I know you live in Maryland, but do you want to come up to Massachusetts and it's play a show? So like, crazy. here's my phone number. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it's it's crazy, but we're, we did it. I don't know how, but I, I agree. It was a special time, and I think the connections that you made, like all the bands made, like, you know, playing with the Hassan guys, Ruheda, um, um, uh, uh, Days Refrain, you know, just all the, the, the brother bands, uh, Transistor, you know. I mean, it was just awesome just to connect with those guys and, and go do all that together. You know, that's what I loved, you yeah, know. definitely. I think Rusty just said calling from a payphone, getting off an exit and calling from a payphone. Dude, I mean, the Rusty thing, like, you know, there's a band, you know, we love them. Eclipse of Eden, mm. awesome dude. Like, everybody in that band's an amazing guy, you know? And I don't know how we even hooked up with them. I don't remember. I'm sure Rusty would, but I think we, like, jumped on their tour. You know, like, we didn't do shit. We were just like, oh, you got a tour? Yeah, we do a tour. You know, like, we didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tommy's, Tommy's on here. He's giving you some hearts right there. Tommy Dave? Yep. Oh, my God. I love those guys so much. Probably one of my favorite bands to play with. Oh, oh Tanner's on here, too. Oh, my God. It's a reunion. <laughs> yeah, Clips of Eden, they were one of the first bands. We toured for, like, a whole month with them, you know? Yeah. And they were all, all such great dudes, you know, Midwest sweetheart dudes, you know? Yeah, definitely. And great band. All the homies are in here. Vinny from Gospel, Page 99's on here. Maybe Mike. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so going back to Page, I mean, uh, Neil Perry, you had like some great splits too. Satellite Crash, Chaos Pilot, yeah. uh, Joshua Pfeiffer bat Battle Split, yeah. um, and, and A Day's Refrain, which was the last one, yeah. the last split you did, right? Yeah, that was um, the last one we did with Andy. Um, that was cool because we were just friends with those guys are from our area. Super, super cool guys. Um, the satellite crash thing that was through Jamil. Like he was, he was kind of like working with them. And he just decided to do a split. Yeah. Uh, the usurp split. That was a fun split yeah. to do. That was the first thing we did with Greg. I think. Pretty sure. Pretty sure that was the first thing we did, we did with Greg, and that was fun. I think we toured with them a little bit that summer. Maybe like next summer, we eventually hooked up with them. Yeah. They were great, great dudes. Funny, funny guys. Yeah, you. It's it's great that usurps back uh, doing it again too. It's crazy. It's, it's awesome. Um, I know, like so, some some people, uh, Travis might have said, you know, I inadvertently had like a a hand in getting them back together from doing certain <laughs> things like this, doing doing a little talk. Yeah, like uh, crazy man. Like the the band's getting back together thing. I did not have that on my bingo card. I did. I, I it blows my mind. I think it's. I think it's cool. I mean, I don't think any of my bands would do it. I don't know what the other guys think. Um, but it's like, dude, Sasha and Page Nine Nine and uh, City Caterpillar are selling out the Metro. Yeah, it's crazy. What? That's fucking insane. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's fucking amazing. Like, go, go, do that. You know, that's fucking sick. Like, I would never, never in a million years expect that. that yeah. I mean, Jerome's Dream is doing great too. That 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 new album that just came out, it's like it's crazy. They're writing like amazing tunes yeah. now too. It's like it's, it's so cool awesome. They kind of like are going for it in a way. You know, they're just doing it for real. Like they weren't doing it at this level when they were doing it back in the day. They were, you know, they were just doing it like everybody else is playing shows and 
and blah blah blah. But now it seems like they're kind of like a little machine now, right? Yeah. They got all the backing and so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Red's getting back together yeah. again too. Red. Those are my boys. Those. Let's let's talk about Red's. How good has that been? Do you have oh. that LP? So yeah, of course. Yeah, Red's. Is I awesome. love that record, man. It was so fun to, to make. I love Evan. I love those guys. And it, it, like that's like a a phenomenal record. Just a different record. It is. You know, I don't even know what it would. I don't even know what it kind of reminds me of. But it, it, I love that band. So that's that's sick. I have to go see them soon, for sure. Uh, I'm due to go see those guys. That was a fun record to make, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of other bands that you were you were talking about, Ruheda is working on new are, music too. Are they, yeah, I talked to Nick a little bit through Instagram. Um, so they're they're doing stuff too. They're, yeah, they're working on new music. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. Amazing. I mean, and they I, were amazing. Oh, so good, so they good. Used to just crush, man. That was a fun. That was a fun time because, like I said, Macar was like one of my favorite bands from that whole thing, and like just to hook up with them and meet them and be friends, and it it was cool. It was really really cool. Yeah, definitely. I know you said that uh, reunions probably wouldn't happen for you, um, but I feel like. I'm not pushing this, believe me. <laughs> but I'm saying if Neil Perry got back together just to do like a few shows here and there, I think it would draw incredibly. Uh, it, I mean, I think that band meant, meant so much, it, and Hot Cross as well, meant so much to so many people that like, I think it would be huge just like all these other things. that are it's, it's, it's cool to hear that, you know? I mean, it's, I think everyone in the band would be very surprised to hear that. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's it's just kind of mind blowing, you know. Like, so much time has gone by. Like, how are how are people even discovering this stuff? Just obviously through the internet, but what is it? Just through YouTube? I mean, is it like a is it like a record sharing thing? Like, yeah. I, how did I mean? I mean, you, I, the band? You know? I mean, Neil Perry is 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 up there in the Godfathers of <laughs> like, which I hate this. I hate this. I hate this term screamo. But yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it, it's that genre of music. Neil Perry's up there, like top five. You know what I mean? It's like so you know. Funny. So I think that um, I'm, I'm <laughs> friends with I'm friends with Dove from this band Pyre from Philly, and he okay. does a fest. He does a fest, like a big fest, where In Loving Memory played. Oh, uh, cool. they were the they were the top band uh, on the that day, and he was uh, saying that that he would love to get Neil Perry to. You know, it's for my for it'd be amazing. I, I it, that's so cool that that anybody cares. To be honest, like I, it's it's seriously really cool. The thing with that band is like, from my perspective, that was like a real friend band. Like that was like a, a best friend from high school band kind of thing. And like the friend aspect of that band was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And nobody from that band really talked to me. So it's kind of yeah, it's kind of a bummer. It is what it is. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but until the, the band would be friends again, I don't think anything would even happen like that. You yeah, know, yeah. everybody's just doing their thing. You know, everybody's doing well. But yeah, that's the that's the thing. It, it would be cool if we could all reconnect and and do something like that. But it it would be yeah yeah. Just <laughs> like learn that stuff again. I I I remember like one song maybe. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know Dave from Zegama would love to have you on Dave, the PBR Fest. Dave, too. I, I love Dave. He's such a cool guy. Yeah. He's kind of school. He schooled me with all the new bands. You know, he he yeah. knows all the new shit. So. Yeah, yeah. He's. he's you know, I, I think it would be cool in theory. I, I mean, I, I don't know. You never know sometimes, you know. But yeah. uh, that it'd be cool. It, it it just such a weird thing to think about standing in front of all four of those dudes. Hey, what are we gonna play? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing, but um. Speaking of Neil Perry and exposure, it, it is really only YouTube. I think there's only on Spotify, there's only the split with oh, yeah, uh, yeah. A Day's Refrain on there. Um, I, I, I'm i not pushing this, but like, I think if Neil Perry's stuff was on those, yeah. you know, streaming I'd services. Like get it on there. I'm not, like, I'm not so, like, so Casey's pretty familiar. He's gotten stuff on, on Spotify. It's like a whole process, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, I need to just look into it because I'd love to get all that stuff on there. Yeah, yeah, because Hot Cross only has, I think, I think it's only the exactly. wrist, re wrist Revival, I think, is the only thing on there. New set yeah. of locks I would love to have on there. Yeah, um, yeah, I want to get the other stuff on there for sure. The one thing we're talking about is I might remix the Fair Trades EP. I have the files. So I might just, like, remix it and then put it on Spotify. Ooh, so that would be, be nice. kind of cool. 
Yeah, that was really cool. But I definitely want to get that stuff on there. I, I mean, I use Spotify all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, crazy. Like, like lineage is like you you can't get it anywhere. Yeah. Unfortunately, I sold my copy of lineage, um, and you it's like ninety dollars on Discogs. Like, it, so it, it's it, just totally out of print. I mean, yeah. I don't even know who Greg would have, how many Greg would have printed. I have no idea. Shit, I have no idea. Yeah, it's like, five. I don't yeah, know. You can't, you can't find it anywhere. And if you do pay for it, it's like 90 bucks. It's crazy. Um, so I got it. Yeah, I got to get it on there. I think I just, like I said, I need to set up the distro kid thing, like through Spotify, and then I can get everything on there. So it's it's definitely a plan. I got I got to get it up there. I, I agree. It'd be cool to have it all there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I wanted to talk about, oh, my dogs are going wild again. Who's <laughs> <laughs> dog is uh, I have two staffies and I have one rat terrier. I have three dogs. I love dogs, man. I Me mean, too. I'm a huge dog. It's National Puppy Day today, too. Really? Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I'm a big, big dog guy. Do you have dogs? Not right now, but my dog, my dad has a dog, and he comes over like every weekend, just yeah. kind of asking the thing. And uh, so he brings his dog. So I, I get it now, but I'm I have to buy another dog. I gotta get. Yeah. yeah. What kind of dog does your dad have? He has a boxer. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I love boxers. We had like a couple of them. So, uh, you know, so it's cool. I, I I love the dogs, man. The dogs are important, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Just just ending the Neil Perry yeah. uh, talk yeah. that we're having. Um, What kind of like disbanded the band? Like what, how, how come you guys well, kind of just. I was just actually talking? thinking about this like yesterday. I'm like, what did break the band up? So I know that our last show was with, was so A Day's Refrain was doing a last show in New Jersey with uh with first aid kit shout out first aid kit yeah, hell yeah best band, best band ever so we we played that show and that ended up being our last show too because oh. we just never played a show after that that is online i think maybe one song or something yeah. was at the end one hall kind of like a legendary place in new jersey yeah um and that was our last show and i think what happened is justin joined the life once lost around that time mm -hmm. and i think once he got in that band like his schedule was just you, you know, they were just, yeah. they were way too busy. And I think that, I think that's what it was. I think that when we just, we just ended and then, um, um, welcome to play year started. And I was already doing a hot cross at the time. So I kind of already had like a main thing, but it was kind of like a weird thing. It wasn't, I don't know. It was, it was kind of just like, Oh, I guess we're done kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really planned out anything, which is kind of a bummer, but that ended up being our last yeah. show, the last laser friend show. No shit. So, so how many bands were you in at one time? It was like, was Neil Perry, Hot Cross, uh, I think, the Now? I think I was literally in five bands at one time. Yeah. It was pretty ridiculous. Like, that was never the plan. Like, I, I was never trying to be like, I know, I'm going to be in the most bands at one time. So what happened was, uh, Neil Perry was, was like my main band. Mm -hmm. And then when Neil Perry met the Joshua, I was a Joshua Battle, Battle fan. Yeah. Like, they had like a couple things out. Mm -hmm. Dude, they were like my favorite band. Yeah. Like when I found them, I was like, this is the great, like I was obsessed. Yeah. So we ended up playing a show with them and the two bands became like genuinely like best friends. Like I, I just saw Kevin and Larry like two weeks ago. So it was, it was just a natural thing. And they, the guitar player was leaving and I was always hanging out in Delaware and they were like, Hey, you want to join? So I joined. So those two bands were going on. And then while those two bands were going on, the two bands together were like, dude, we should do another band, The Now. Yeah. So that, that literally started in the JFFB van. We're just like, we should do a band. It would be, uh, the idea was do like a refused kind of band, like a more kind of punk refused or something, like a more screamy refused. Yeah. So that was the kind of the whole idea with that. But that's how that band started. And then, and then Hot Cross started. And then Superstitions was like my side thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how did you find the time to do all that stuff? I, dude, I have no idea. <laughs> like, I think about it, dude, I have no idea. And I wrote just constant music. Like, my favorite part about being in the bands was the hanging out, but, like, writing the songs was my thing. Yeah. Like, that's why I love playing in bands. That's why I played in five bands. Like, I just love writing music, you know? Yeah. So at that time, it's all I did. I, it must have been all I did because I don't know how I did all that stuff at the same time. And yeah, I worked yeah. full time and I went to school, so I have no idea. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I would never do it now. You know what I mean? Like, I gotta like 
I gotta like plan out a trip to the supermarket now. Like, yeah. I'm gonna, gonna go in about a half hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Well, <laughs> I know I'm the same way. It's it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it, you know, getting old sucks, but you know, what are you gonna do? Now, when Huck Cross started, I, I I've heard Billy said that he was overseas, and yeah. was he? I mean, was the singer always going to be Billy? So, like when you first created that. Band? Not, when that started, it was basically me, Matt, and Greg from it was Matt and Greg from Stacia. Stacia ended, and I was always good friends with Greg because you know he was doing the level level plane, and uh, we just kind of wanted to do like a again not a serious thing like a side band just to have fun, and so it was me, Chris, and and Greg at first, and eventually we we're like two months later we we're like we got to get Casey yeah like we we got to get Casey like what are we doing yeah so we got Casey and, and I don't. I think we no, we never played a show. It was just me and Casey like doing vocals kind of. Yeah. And just doing their like the first record. Mm -hmm. And then at some point Greg was like, you know, I think Billy's coming back from England. I think we could get Billy to sing. And yeah. we're like, Yeah, we gotta do that. Yeah. And Billy told the story on the panel, but he's he told it way better than I could tell it. <laughs> but yeah, that was real. Like we sent him de like practice demos in England. Yeah. He wrote the vocals somehow. Then he came over. I think did we I don't think we did we practice together? I don't remember, but he just showed up at the show and sang and the rest is history. Yeah, I think he said that he just played the, the first I, show as a band. I think, like, I, think a that's true. Yeah, I think that's true. But yeah, like he couldn't find the show at first and it was a it was a whole thing. But yeah, it, it really did go down like that. Yeah, such it an incredible crazy. such an incredible band. I when you when y'all first started, I saw Hot Cross a bunch of times. Obviously you've seen Were the you videos like, when you I was, yeah. yeah, with Four Stella Ford and Off Minor. Yeah, I, I videotaped well, that. And Transistor played that, right? Transistor played too, I think, too, yeah. So I think that's the not, the day we met them. Oh, no kidding. I'm pretty sure that's at Haverhill show because I think Greg was talking to them already and he was like, oh, I'm thinking about doing a record with this band. They're going to play. And they were amazing. I love yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just reconnected with Brian uh, Faber, the original drummer of Transistor. Transistor oh, that's awesome. It's been like over 20 years. Yeah. So it's it's good to reconnect with him. They were a great band, and again, like they were a different kind of band. They were like kind of like a garagey band, yeah. You know, great band. I think it was like the first like you know band like that where people were actually like dancing, like real dancing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like to to that band, it was it yeah. was very fun and like back then. Yeah, they were kind of like, like the Holy Shroud. Do you remember the Holy Shroud? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that band to death. Like they were like a real band. They were yeah. like a real band. You know, like they weren't just doing the bullshit we were doing. They were like write real songs, and you know, they were like could play, and you know, great band. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I was at I was at that show. I videotaped that. Mm -hmm. I did New England a lot. Yeah, uh, Yager. When you guys played with Yager, and in, in uh, it was Tufts oh, in Massachusetts. Yeah, you in that yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tufts was Tufts was great. Obviously, Brian from Stores, all the Yukon mm -hmm. shows. Oh. You know, Brian. He's a legend, of course. His shows were great, you know. And yeah, he put on the you know, greatest show. Long, man. Like it's crazy. We would all work on until Friday, like at five on Friday, jump in the car and drive up to Boston on Friday night. Why yeah. we, we thought that was a good idea, I have no idea. And every time we pull in right before we play, you know, it was like a nightmare. But we, you know, we loved it. Yeah. But it was really was brutal. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm I'm glad that I got to record Fuckfest when uh, you, the Joshua Fit for Battle played and Neil Perry played and you sir, like ended the sh yeah, that fest. Was that in Rhode Island? No, it was in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Is, is that online? Is yeah, that I put it online. Yeah. Yep, I put it online. I don't know. There's, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but there's one show we played. I think it was this show where the other guitar player Brian from Joshua for Battle was in the wrong tuning. So like the whole first song is all out of tune. I don't I don't know if that's video. Hopefully that's not that video, but Yeah, oh. I, don't, I don't think it's that, it might not be that video. It was like, pretty funny. Yeah, that I'm show was funny. crazy because the crowd was all over all over. I think you. it was that show. It was packed. Yeah, Did it was packed. Play that? Uh um as, as the sunset played, played the the day okay. before. Okay, that was definitely that. That was that was a great show. That was but you sir played that too, right? Usurp yeah. was the last band that played that okay. night. Yeah, that was a great show. It was. Cold. I always forget about all the shows, man. Yeah. Like I see the flyers on Instagram. Like, I don't care for that. 
that show? Like, you played that show? I don't remember half of these shows, man. Like, Hassan was only around for, like, what, like a year? We yeah, they were a million times. Like, we probably played with them five times. They were my favorite band line. Oh, so good. So good. I'll never forget the first time I saw them, More Than Music Fest. More Than Music Fest in Ohio. First time I ever, ever saw them. Fucking Ryan surfs the bass. Second <laughs> song in just throws the bass down and surfs the bass in the middle of the song like, this is it yeah. this is the fucking band this is my favorite band oh that's amazing, that's amazing. <laughs> i love that yeah band. yeah that band is in- incredible i mean um, incredible. um i i wanted to like so after Hot Cross, I mean, you guys kind of switched gears in Hot Cross, kind of from like, kind of like the screamy stuff to more mellowish type of music. Uh, started playing bigger shows and stuff like that. What was what was the, you know, process of kind of changing the music up a little tiny bit? That's a good question. I don't think it was like a conscious thing. I, I mean, I like I said, I think the first EP, like the first ten inch, mm-hmm. that was those were like the first songs we wrote. And I think originally we were thinking it would be more of like again, like the San Diego kind of thing. Yeah. Like a click attack kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. And I think slowly it kind of morphed into naturally what we all kind of do. Yeah. You know, like me and Casey kind of had a thing on the guitar that didn't really sound like the first record as much. I think we all kind of just settled into our instruments a little bit more and just kind of found a sound for the band. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think it was more of a natural thing. Yeah. But like I was saying before, I was always into melody. Mm. So I was always trying to add melody to everything, you know, which I'm sure some people are like, what the hell, bro? They're singing. <laughs> They're singing, bro. You gotta cut that out. You know, like every band I ever played in was like that. You know, it was like, oh, this guy's singing again. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for your taste, do you like when bands do that? Like, I know how, uh, you know, Daughters kind of did that where they were like super chaotic, screamy, and then all of a sudden they came out with a record where, right. where Lex was kind of. Oh, right. like, so not necessarily in the same song, but just kind of different records doing different things kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, or, or bands just progressing into like a more. Yeah, I, I, I'm big in progression. Like I, I don't think you know I'm not I'm not really the guy that's looking for the same record over and over again. You know I think you should at least progress a little bit. You know, I definitely think that should be uh, to me like a goal in in the band. You you want to kind of always move forward kind of thing. Yeah, and I think that's why the reunion thing. For, for for me it's kind of weird because it's just going backwards you know yeah. it's I, I i would be more stoked in reforming the band and making a new yeah record. i mean that would be incredible that too. would be exciting you know that would now out of all your bands what what one personally would you want to see if you did a reunion what, what band would you want to do a reunion like joshua fit for battle the now like what like what one that's a good question i think it would be interesting to see what neil perry would do now i mean it seems weird to even say that because everybody's just in a different place in their life, you know? And I really, I really do feel like the, the, the chemistry and the, where you are at in your life at that time, it does come through in the music for sure. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it would sound like Neil Perry if we got back together, but, but I think that band had a very distinct kind of thing going on. Like everybody was doing a certain thing in the band, you know? Like John's a great bass player. He's very influenced by like the Cure. So he was playing very melodic lines, you know. And yeah. Chris, Chris was always doing cool stuff. And Justin's like the best drummer I ever saw. So everybody had their thing. So I think it would be interesting to see what the band would do now. But who knows what it would sound like? You know? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you have a fever for for playing like heavy chaotic stuff anymore? I mean, is there yeah. a fever where you kind of want to jump yeah. back in and just like? It's it's funny like. I don't really think about it too, too much like like a genre thing. It's more just like writing the best song. Yeah. So like me and Casey are working on a new thing now, and it's super eclectic, man. There's one song that sounds almost like Ministry on this song. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah, it's it's kind of all over, you know. I like everything. Like Ministry is actually one of my favorite bands. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I love heavy. I still love heavy stuff. I still listen to a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it's just so hard to say what it would sound like, you know. But I, I love the heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. I mean, I th- do you think your uh, voice would hold up screaming again? <laughs> I mean, that is. Kind of sound like that. <laughs> like a dying, dying dog or something. But, but yeah, it, it would be interesting, man. It, it certainly would. Yeah. I mean, I feel like my voice would. I mean, I probably could do it, but I would. I don't know. 
It's been so long since I've screamed. At, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think I've screamed in 20 years. Yeah, me neither. I don't, well, maybe not 20 years, but it's been like 15 for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, Billy can do it. Yeah, yeah it's Billy, crazy. Billy can do it. That, that's, that, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to see Seisha in a couple Have you months. seen them at all since they reunited? I no, I haven't seen them since they reunited, but I am going to see them in June at the Middle East. In, in oh, Cambridge. cool. Cool. Yeah. Now, who's that with? That's with Sinaloa, oh, and, uh, which is back together again also. And That's uh, a new band called New Forms, which I have the shirt on oh, right cool. now. It's my my so homies. Are they, new, are, they're a new England band? Yeah, they're a new band. They're, they're uh, you know, Boston-based, Salem, Massachusetts, okay. um, female-fronted, like, band. I want really to see the same thing. I want, I want to see it, definitely. I mean, it's not the original lineup, which is slightly a bummer for me because <laughs> – the original lineup's incredible. Yeah. I mean, Jamie, Jamie's an incredible star. Yeah. He's, amazing. Um, He's, amazing. He's special, you know? And Greg is an amazing, like, his drumming, for me, that's the sound of the station. Yeah, yeah. His drumming yeah. in that LP is amazing. Yeah. You know? So it, it's a bummer that the kids can't see the real lineup. Yeah. But I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they're killing it, you know? I'm sure they're killing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm glad to see Tom in the band. Oh, from me too. Tom's the, so Tom was in that band and still. Oh, that yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. He, Tom's been an incredible musician since the day I knew about Tom. Like he really, you know, full fledged guitar player, songwriter, singer, you know, can do it all kind of thing. He's he's so talented. Yeah. And a beast. I mean, he's still oh. going strong. Like yeah. hundreds of yeah. AU is so good. Like they, that's a great call. He hasn't really stopped, no. right? I mean, he's just completely... no. He's never stopped. He's incredible. He's like he is so. He's so incredible at guitar. Yeah. Such I, don't, a good I don't know where he finds the energy. Honestly, I know. I, I mean, he was a huge inspiration too. Like you know, go uh, you and I. Like they were like my favorite band. You know, I mean, I used to go to their practices, mm. and that was actually interesting because to see that. band, Band, like they had a they had they were one of those bands that had a true dynamic like everybody in the band was doing a thing right like it was a it was a clear-cut kind of defined thing in the band and to see them write songs was amazing for me because they just spend like five hours on a saturday working out the song yeah. working out the words you know it wasn't just throw it together let's go play a show it was a let's get this right yeah and it really stuck with me yeah you yeah. and i is, is huge for me oh. like such, such a great band i, I love amazing. that band so much I would love to see that band reunite too. I think it, it would. Yeah, did, uh, I think they did a couple of reunions. Uh, I think they're on YouTube. I went to one, and that was even weird. But that was like 15 years ago now. Yeah, like which is yeah. so crazy, you know. I know it's. They were amazing. They they were like a huge a local band for me for sure. Yeah, it's wild. Um, so when will we hear this, uh, Casey Josh? Uh... So it's called. Vista Rhymes, we did, like, there's some stuff online now, but it's kind of like the initial demos that Casey kind of had at home that we kind of just, like, uh, mixed, kind of, just to kind of get it out there and get get the songs out there. Yeah. So now we're working on, like, a full length now, and we're basically mixing. Oh, nice. Nice, so nice. It's pretty cool. We're working on it for way too long. <laughs> you know, like, he's busy. He's a college professor, and I, I obviously work full time, and that's the bum the bummer thing about being older now working on music is like before like all you did it was like no brainer you wake up and you go to practice now it's like family and work and it's kind of a bummer but it is what it is. yeah that I, I, it's funny you said that because you know i'm 52 okay. and i can't imagine i have i have two two kids two kids three dogs a wife you know uh, a house i work full time insane, and, and i would have to you know definitely schedule if i had to yeah, do right. things like that it would be so right. hard now instead of being right. like a teenager yeah. or early 20 years, 20s where you could just like totally. go off for a month you know totally. what i mean totally. i mean even just to arrange your practice with family stuff and work it's complicated you know and and it doesn't have the priority that it did because obviously family and work is always going to be first yeah yeah definitely. You know? which is a bummer it just is what it is i guess but Back then, I, I didn't think like that at all. It was just oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to tell you, my my uh, buddy Tony, he has the cover of the um, usurp Neil Perry uh, on his leg tattooed on his leg. The cover of oh, that. It's, it's probably really? you know this big. Yeah, I'll send I'll send you a picture that, of it. Um, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. 
It's it's it looks really good too. <laughs> That's so crazy. I mean, it's. I mean, I think everybody from that time, like I watched the Mike uh, Taylor interview, and what a, what a cool guy, you know. But just like the perspective that he had, I totally agreed with. It was just like it's awesome, you know. I feel super humble and appreciative that anyone cares now because back then it was just a totally different thing. It was. You know, it was just a, it was a very insular, small team, you know? Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Like, see so many people stoked on it. Yeah, I mean, I was I was lucky to get um, a lot of the people that I talked to. Uh, it was, like I told you in text, it was it was hard to get some people. Yeah. Um, I really took some digging to, like. Incredible job finding some people, man. And, like, uh, incredible. Thank, thank you. I, I appreciate that, really. It, it was really cool because it was fun for all of us i'm sure i'm scrolling i'm like what what this guy you found him (laughs) yeah it was it was tough but it was like i wanted to talk to people that you know i admired and and really felt a connection with musically and and just like loved the music so everybody that i talked to i had a special connection personally for me that's cool that's really cool you know some people would be like oh you should talk to this person you should talk to that person it had to mean something to right. me to talk right. to these people, you know. What that's I mean? awesome. That's I, I think it comes through, you know, and I think that's why it's done so well, and that's why I was so stoked to do it, is because I, you know, I, I genuinely appreciate it. It's it's awesome. It's rad, man. And it's crazy. It's like we're on the other side of life here, and you know, it feels like a different lifetime. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I come off corny, where I'm like such a well, not 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 a fanboy, but I come off like a fanboy. I'm like, oh my god, I mean, that was so amazing. But, was that's, amazing. but th- I feel passionate about yeah. like. That. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's I feel the same way, man. You know, I'm a fanboy for millions of bands. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's cool, man. It's it, it's cool. It, it, I'm sure everybody appreciates it for sure. I, I appreciate that definitely um i don't want to hold you up too long uh this has been amazing but like if you you've seen my talks i always do a rapid fire at the end cool uh, you you ready to yeah rapid fire or what my test the old memory here (laughs) i know Uh, plenty of time no uh no rush at all i don't know if uh honestly instagram will kick me (laughs) off after an hour i haven't done this in a while um but we'll we'll try to get what we can um (laughs) Awesome. The first one, what is your all-time favorite New England band, hardcore, screamo-wise, for you at New England? I, I think I do have to go with Hassan. Do they, do they qualify? Oh, yeah. yeah, they definitely okay. qualify. Yeah. They definitely. yeah. I mean, there's so many good bands. I mean, dude, there's so many. Like Cave In, Piebald, Converge. Like, I loved all that stuff as well. Transistor, yeah. Drums Dream. There's so many bands. But I'd probably go with my boys, Hassan. Nice, nice. Um, number two, what was your first hardcore show you attended? Like real hardcore show? That's a good question. Shit. Like uh, probably a probably a New Brunswick show. Because so, New Brunswick, do you remember the whole New Brunswick scene? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was incredible. It was huge. Billinger, right? you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Lifetime. So oh, that's a good, it probably would have been a U and I show. That probably would have been a U and I show. I, they play great shows too. They used to play some really cool shows all over Pennsylvania. You know, yeah. I, so it probably would have been that. I can't remember exactly what. Nice, that's sick. Um, third, what was your favorite hardcore show you attended, but you didn't perform at? Like that you went to for, and you were blown away mm. by. It might. It might actually have to be that that uh, last Dead Guy show. That's the only one that really sticks out. It was so early. Yeah. But you look at the lineup of that that show; it was incredible. Yeah. It's crazy. That, it's, that, it's crazy that Dead Guy and Elliot played yeah, the yeah, same show yeah. <laughs> and, and saves the day. Yeah, saves the day. Jumps on three songs borrowed, ignites gear. <laughs> like it was, just, and oh, here's a great. Uh, Elliot shows up late, and I do you remember that band Empathy? Oh yeah, yes, I, I do. fucking love that band. So Jay from Empathy is in Elliot. Mm-hmm. He first song he has a full stack knocks over the whole full stack just kicks the amp knocks it over like they showed up late it was chaos yeah. like that was a sick that was, and that was in New Brunswick that was a wow sick no show. kidding that sounds awesome um, fourth one all time favorite show you played that meant the most to you hmm that's a good question you know what was a cool show do you remember Mac Rock I do remember, do you remember the yep. show? I don't yep. remember what year that was. I want to say like 2001, maybe. Everybody played that. Page 99, Majority Rule. Like that was 
And it was like a fest, I guess. I don't know if that really counts. No, but that was that was an incredible show. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I think I think a couple of my bands played it. I don't remember, but it it was amazing. I think Super Chunk played that. Fugazi headline. Oh no kidding. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. That's, that was amazing. I think that's online. I think that's YouTube. That's sick. Um, I'm a huge movie guy. I always ask this: What was the last movie you watched? Oh, holy shaman! Probably a long ass. I don't watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of documentaries. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of my favorites, Fargo. Fargo, be awesome. classic, classic. Yeah, one of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah. When I'm doing, I can't turn it off. It's like, fuck. yeah, it's so good. Do you watch the series too? A little bit, a little bit. I got into it a little bit, but yeah, that movie is so incredible. It's so it's yeah. a, it's legendary, yeah. definitely. <laughs> it is seriously. Um, <laughs> In the same vein of movie questions, I always ask, what's your favorite horror movie of all time? That's a good question, too. Probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, the classic shit is yeah. really where you got to go for that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, like, a horror movie book for anything, but that, that yeah. movie is incredible. It's funny. They keep trying to, like, tap into that, and they haven't, they haven't done it. They can't, yeah. they can't get it right. 100%. Percent. I don't know. It must be just the 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 vibe of that thing. You, it's hard to recreate the vibe. Like you think you know how to make it special, and then you go in. And it's like this yeah. is nowhere. To be. Yeah, you know, exactly. like it, you know. Yeah, they keep they keep uh, missing on every every effort they do to try and like. <laughs> but, uh, um, I always ask this too. I'm a huge like boom bap hip hop guy, like nineties okay. hip hop and okay. stuff like that. Um, I don't know if you listen to that I do. type of stuff. I always ask if you've been listening to hip hop lately. What have you been listening to? I, I've been listening to a, like Wu Tang's probably my favorite. I mean, back in the day, like all the guys in Neil Perry list do a lot of hip hop. I didn't listen to so much at the time, but the whole Wu Tang thing, like being in this area, you yeah. know, they that, that I mean, obviously they're one of the greats of all time. But yeah, for yeah. sure, Definitely. that first Wu Tang record is incredible. I love ODB. Um, I like all the classic shit. Mm. You know the the late 80s stuff yeah um, yeah I'd, I'd probably go with what the first week time record nice nice um if you've been listening to any new hardcore bands or screamo bands what, whatever the genre is for heavy mm -hmm. music what what mm -hmm. have you been listening to for new music to you that that you've been digging um i probably probably you know i try what, whatever so much new stuff like I, I i feel like i fail miserably at finding <laughs> new shit i don't know i don't know if i've heard anything i mean i heard this the um, dave sent me some stuff but i don't really know if i knew anything you gotta send me some new stuff i haven't found any new hardcore stuff that i've really gotten into you know so I, yeah i don't think there's anything i don't think there's any like i'm kind of more into the pop stuff now but yeah. for new for new shit yeah damn i'm not sure you're gonna have to send me some stuff man i i'm like totally out of the yeah. loop is the problem. yeah yeah i think I've, i sent you a few things you um, did. You you did. Know, I, sent you, I, I sent you massonera which is like yeah. they're from jersey right yeah mm -hmm. yeah they're so good they're so good yeah uh, yeah it's cool it's cool i i want to i want to discover like a new band that kind of is my you know my jam, yeah, jam for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta you and dave gotta send me yeah. more stuff but but yeah i'm not sure that that you gotta help me with that, Dave, that, says, Dave says you like Nova Lascara. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> do you know? Yes. Yes. He sent me that. He sent me that. See the name. I can't remember any of these names. Yeah. Like Massanera, Nova, something. I mean, nothing <laughs> like Bob. Bob Tilton. Remember that band? Yeah. Um, yeah. He he sent me that. I, I'm hoping. So I'm doing a podcast with Dave. We just yeah. did one episode. We're going to do more episodes. I'm hoping he can kind of school me on the new shit. Yeah. yeah and I'll yeah. find like a new band that's like my jam. Dave. Dave you know? is. Dave is the. Uh, He's, He's the man. president now. He's he took over like what level plane was. Dave is now the yeah. new level plane like he, master. Now. He does a lot of stuff. He where he works hard doing that shit. But I like I said, I'm so out of the loop, man. He needs to like school my ass on that shit big time. Sweet, sweet. Um, and my final question always is, what is some of the favorite songs you like to play live back back then? Like, what what songs were you really you know? Oof. That is a great question. I don't know, man. I would say I liked the last stuff that Neil Perry wrote. I thought that was the strongest stuff. I liked playing those songs. I wish we would have stayed together longer to play those songs live. Like kind of the, the first couple songs on the lineage thing. Yeah. I, I, I always like playing that stuff live. 
And then for Hot Cross, I would say, again, kind of the end, like the Fair Trade stuff was kind of my favorite stuff. And right before I left the band, um, which we didn't really get into this on the deal, but right before I left the band, the stuff we were writing at that time, I thought was really, really strong. Yeah. And I think some of it carried over to the to the Rich Revival, but that stuff that we were writing, I think towards the end of those bands were my favorite. Now, was there any unreleased music that never got put out for like Neil Perry or Hot Cross or any of that stuff? Like, obviously you said you were writing some stuff, but yeah. is, did yeah. any of that yeah. stuff get recorded? Neil Neil Perry went in, like, the last stuff we recorded was kind of the stuff, like, okay, we should just record this stuff so we have it. So I, I don't think anything for Neil Perry. The Hot Cross stuff, I think, all got released. We had some demos, like I said, towards the end of that band that we were working on. Yeah. I think I'll have those. No, but I think everything got released pretty much. I w Dude, I was super lucky, man. Like, and that's the thing that I want to say that I don't know if anybody else really said, but the important thing. Thing, like if anybody likes any of this stuff is you got to thank greg drudy andy lowe and jameel and mike haley and chris williams and all the people who did the labels those are the guys that get all the credit man i'm dead serious without any of them nobody knows shit without greg and and andy we're just a bunch of douchebags like in a basement for a couple of years like really that's what it is you yeah. know so the, the, the labels, like Greg, like I said, Greg, Andy, and Jamil and all those guys that did the level plane and robotic, like, they deserve all the credit. Yeah. They really do. Because now, they made it all happen. Now, have you talked to Greg recently? I talked talk to Greg actually yesterday. Oh, text, nice. But he, he's kind of doing his thing. He's, kind, he's got a family thing. Him and his wife are doing their careers. He's doing really well. Uh, he's kind of not in the music thing, but we actually went to see. I'm a big soccer guy. And so, is he, so we went to a couple of soccer games last nice. couple of years. Which nice. is pretty cool. Uh, but he's doing well. Um, but Andy, I don't talk. He's traveled a lot. He's bouncing around. Yeah. He was living in New Zealand for a while. But um, a great, again, like another just phenomenal guy. Yeah, you know? and Andy is such a great guy. I mean, he he's the one that basically uh, Nick uh, Sadler from Daughters was oh, cool. basically got Nick back into Daughters, like really? kind of kind of bridged that gap between like, like when awesome. Nick. When Nick left, uh, Andy Lowe was the reason why Daughters got back together. That is crazy. He, he was a, yeah, he was a big fan of that band. You know, the cool thing about all those guys is, like, they put out stuff that they liked. Mm. You know, they just had great taste in music, and they knew what they were doing. Like, it was never like, oh, dude, this hot new band over here might sell. It was never anything like that, ever, for those guys. They just liked stuff they liked. They wanted to help out friends, and, and they did a great job. Like, I really – I'm very – grateful for all those guys yeah. you know it, it's crazy that you don't see as many labels as you did back then like yeah. you do now because i mean like you said it was like level plane uh robotic empire witching hour mm -hmm. electric electric human yeah. project uh, yeah, spiritual. yeah it was just like like clean plate yeah clean plate. will from mm -hmm. clean plate yeah it's just like it was so many clean plate stuff, you know it is why do you think that is i don't know i mean Honestly, it's like, I don't know if bands are just putting it out True. themselves now and, and, and just doing the band camp type of thing. and, and I think that's probably a good call, you know? I mean, it's not like we had big recording budgets or anything, but, like, when you have backing, it does kind of change the whole process. You know what I mean? Because people are putting money in. They want to make sure it's right, you know? So I feel like when you're just recording stuff at home, there's no kind of risk. You know, there's no – you're just throwing it together and then see what happens. I don't know if that's really what it is. Yeah. But yeah, that is interesting. So it's really just Dave kind of kind of doing it. Yeah, Dave. I mean, there's some smaller ones. My friend Ron that I was talking to the okay. other night, he, well, yeah. he does like a smaller label uh, out of Pittsburgh. That's cool. Who, uh, he does like a little fest in Pittsburgh, too, uh, cool. every year. Um, Would I know any of the bands that he's released? Or sh I'll go check it out. Um, I can I can send you uh, his band camp thing. Uh, my cool. old band, High School Sweethearts, he did the discography. I actually have it right. He did like the tapes for my old band, uh, High School Sweethearts. Um, and he's done like a bunch of other bands too. Like really, you know, good bands. He's actually, uh, there's a band called Medicinal that has uh, Matt and Vinny from Helena Troy. Oh, wow. their, their new band. And Mike D from like, he's been in every New York oh, wow. band ever. Like he was in Millhouse and... and oh, yeah. uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so uh, oh, they, they that's have... cool. <laughs> Vinny's on right now, actually. What is going on? <laughs> He's so. Well, he, 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 uh, my Ron actually put out the Reds Reds tape again. He did. Like, yes. Oh shit! So the the one I recorded, or they do another record? 
Um, I think it was the one you recorded. You know what, I think. You're freaking awesome, man. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, he's a, he's a good friend. I'll, I'll send you the link to that, too. Cool. Um, and I, uh, finally, I had, like, one. Uh, it was in my mind. Um, I wanted to ask, what bands did you really love playing with back in the day? I mean, was it, like, did you play with Yafet Kodo? Did you play with, like, what bands, like, really <laughs> blew you away? When you played with? Well, my favorite bands to play with were the bands that we toured with, mostly. Like the Holy Shroud, we we did a couple. We did a Canadian tour. They're amazing. They were they were in that band North America. Yep, I love those guys. Ruheda, uh, the Hassan guys. Like I said, um, shit. I mean, playing with uh, we we played a lot of shows with the Virginia crew, like the the uh, City Caterpillar and Page and and Majority Rule. We played a lot of shows with them. Yeah, they were they you know they they were always great to play with. Yeah, it was really it was really those bands like Ruheda. I, I love playing with that band. It, you know, it was fun to go on tour with those bands. I, we always felt like a gang. I, I felt like we were just a gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Rolling through town, baby. Yeah, you know, weed smoke trails, you know, <laughs> just here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, those, those guys were always so fun. Transistor, so fun to play with. It was all pretty tight knit, you know, like all the level playing bands were all pretty tight. Usurp was fun to play yeah. with. Play, uh, Joshua the Battle did a fun tour with Jerome's Dream. That was fun. Dima, Dima's on here too oh, as well. God. Dima's the man. That guy's an incredible artist. Man. Yeah, he's, he's, oh, he's incredible. Like, I didn't even know who he was doing it, actually. When I knew him, he was doing fiction and then Reds. Mm. And then he's just this incredible artist. I mean, so is Chris Taylor. His shit's amazing. Yeah, yeah Chris but Taylor. I have the, I have the page 99 tattoo. Right no, he, dude, he's, I love his stuff, man. He's amazing. I just think it's so cool. Like uh, Rishi, right? Rishi's out there killing it, dude killing it like it's so great to see all the people from our scene kind of still doing well you know like chris taylor and and dima and it's just so cool that's the stuff that i take away from it. it's just yeah, so yeah. great to see everybody doing so well you know now does it surprise you that like you know all these guys that you know up at, i'm not saying old but you know they're, they're up in their age like still <laughs> still ripping it up does that surprise blows you that me blows me away does it i mean it's crazy yeah it, i mean I mean, you know, I guess the Rolling Stones kind of started that, but like Bad Religion's keeping it going. You know what I mean? Like it's, I guess that's just what it is, right? Like I remember my friend Kevin Danchisco telling me back in the day, like in the 90s, like, can you be punk for your whole life? Like yeah. we don't know you. You haven't yeah, been yeah. enough time yet to find out. So I guess you can. Yeah. I mean, if the Rolling Stones can still tour, I mean, I guess, I guess anybody can. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's funny though, because it's such a young man's game. You know, like music really is. It's a young man's game. So when you're up there looking old and <laughs> I don't know, you know, like it's it just feels weird, you know, yeah. like uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny you say that though because I I hadn't seen a lot of those. I hadn't seen Jerome's Dream in years and and Sinaloa too. Yeah. Sinaloa, like the, I we love Sinaloa. Play. I love all yeah, the, all the guys in Sinaloa. Yeah, great and, uh, I saw them recently and like both bands blew me the fuck away. Like I was like I was like good god like jerome's dream blew me away and then seeing sinaloa on a bigger stage I, I was used to seeing sinaloa yeah. in like like you said basement That's shows and stuff like that and and now the sound like they're on a bigger stage the sound is way better i'm like jesus yeah. these guys are so good like it's so cool you know which is so cool to see the bands actually get that you know like we just played on the floor for four people and now you get real sound and I love that. I think that's so cool for for JD and and Cine like it's just cool, man. And even like Page I Nine and 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 all the Sasha, it's just so cool to see them doing well. But it's still, it's just still weird, you know. Yeah, it's just, yeah. The fuck it's gonna it's gonna be kind of weird seeing Orchid on a bigger oh, stage. Yeah, Orchid, like, Orchid. I love Orchid so much. I'm going to I'm seeing them. Uh, I can't picture them on a big stage. And yeah, I kind of wish they played on the floor. Time. Yeah, like every time you see them, they're just surrounded by people, right? Yeah. Like every video, it's like you're just surrounded. <laughs> yeah. I can't even picture that. But I guess they did Panthers. They probably would have played from stage when they did Panthers. Yeah, they yeah. Probably... But it's, it's, it's going to be so weird it's seeing that on stage. So I, know, I know Jeff Jeff doesn't really like <laughs> to be touched. Like, so, you know, so... Um, yeah, I mean it, it's going to be. I, I love Orchid, so I'm super amped to see. But I'm curious on how it's going to. Uh, in May. Okay. Okay. And okay. Pretty solid lineup. Drop Dead's playing with them That's too. It's crazy. That's crazy. well. I think some of the newer bands are playing those shows too, right? Yeah. Like is Mark and you playing from that? Um, I, I could be wrong. 
I don't know if they're playing. I know on on the Boston show it's Loma Prieta. Oh, cool. Uh, um, Drop Dead and Slow Fire Pistol. I think is playing okay. the. the, the Drop Dead already back together, or are they they've just like, been like they they've, they've never stopped. Drop Dead has just kept going and going and going. That's great. I saw them plenty of times. Yeah, I saw them way back. I saw them with Snapcase at one point. Oh <laughs> shit. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, shows back then used to be like that, right? Like, it would be like a tough guy show, and then there's like a metal band on it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's funny. I set, up, I set up a show in my hometown just like probably six months ago, and I tried to mix it up with like, you know, obviously it had like some screamo type of stuff, but I tried to, you know, mix it up a little bit too. And uh, I almost got Brian Frenette is in like oh, a yeah. black metal band, which I was going to yeah. have his band play, but... uh he, I, I booked too many bands. Like I, I forgot how to set up shows. So I was like, oh shit, I have too many bands. Like I only have a set amount of time. So I was like, but, uh, I tried to mix it up as best I could. So I had a metalcore band. I had some screaming yeah. bands. I had a two piece like uh, Doom Beach from Connecticut, who was like incredible. Um, where where did you make these shows at? I did it at uh, the town hall in oh, my nice. in my hometown. But you know, I I rented a, like a sick PA and and so. You're in New Hampshire, right? Yeah, New Hampshire, okay. yeah. Um, which is close to Vermont, but are you familiar with Eric Valentine, the producer? No. So he did, like, Third Eye Blind. He's, like, a an elite producer. He recently moved to Vermont. He has a studio up there. So I'm thinking about coming up there and stalking him and finding out where his oh, no, get, Do you know where about <laughs> in Vermont? He, he's in Vermont, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's probably pretty far from where you're at. But I've, I haven't been up that way in a long time, so I'm thinking about taking a, taking a trip up to yeah. New Hampshire. Yeah, Ver the Vermont like border is not too far from me, but if we're talking like Burlington, Vermont, that's like uh, three. Yeah, and a half yeah, that's pretty poor, right? Yeah. New Hampshire had a pretty good scene back in the day, right? I mean, queers, queers. Not nineties, nineties hardcore in New Hampshire. Like I sent you all that yeah. stuff that like kind of my bands yeah. were part of. That that was like there was a place called Safe and Sound in Rochester, New Hampshire, and okay. there was a place called uh, Cafe Savoy in Manchester, New Hampshire, and it was nonstop wow. hardcore shows from like 96 to like probably like 2000, and, and it was every band that, you know, Converge, Cave In, oh, uh, torn, torn Apart, oh, like uh, it, the Enkindles, like yeah. like every yeah. uh, botch, botch played in New Hampshire, like Wow. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we ever played in New Hampshire. I think the closest we played was ha Haverhill, right? Yeah, probably. Haverhill, probably. Yeah, yeah. Probably but it's the... funny. Isn't Methuen like on the border? Yep. Like Methuen where and Haverhill is like like Haverhill is literally so on would, the border of New Hampshire. Would those band, like would Caven and Pieball would they play a lot in New Hampshire since they were kind of yeah, right back, there or not? Back, necessarily... back in the day, they did. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I saw Converge a bunch of times in New Hampshire when wow. they they only had petitioning uh, out. Um, that was my that was my favorite Converge. Me too. I'm with, I'm with you on that. Definitely. Who was the shit, man? They yeah. just destroyed back then. Everybody. I mean, same thing, same thing with cave -in. I mean, Beyond Hypothermia is my favorite. Like, Me too. That era, like that early era of those bands, so good, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pieball was ripping it up too. What's that? Pieball was ripping oh, yeah. it up back then too. Yeah. I, I love that that first EP and then the the the, the Lemons LP. Oh, like, yeah. That was just the shit. And yeah. again, you know, it's a band that kind of going back and forth between more screamy stuff and melodic stuff, you know, it was always kind of just a wishy-wash, you know what I mean? It was kind of the combination of the sounds for those bands. Yeah, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes Friends Fight was the EP you were that's, talking that's about. Right. That's my shit. <laughs> so good, so good. It's funny, my friends gave me What's that? My, my friends gave me so much shit because like I was a metalcore guy at that time and then I loved Pieball and they were like, what is this shit? Oh, totally. Like, Totally. That's that's how it was. But dude, I loved Weston. You know, yeah, that yeah. Weston. Yeah. All that shit, you know, plow. But it was always like that for me. Like, you can't listen to that shit. You're playing in a hardcore band now. You can't listen to this punk bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when we were in Japan with uh with City Caterpillar and Hot Cross, 
I was listening to Jeff Buckley's Grace and the first Audio Slave record. Yeah, no kidding. That's all I was to on that on that tour. And he's just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what are you listening to? So I was always listening to different stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. Me too. Uh, once, like I said, Piebald happened for me. That got me into all like the emo stuff where like, you know, it was like Casket Lottery and, and yeah. the Get Up Kids and, yeah. and Elliot and, and, and stuff like that. I was I was hooked once. Did you ever go to the Wilkesbury Fest? No, I never did. No, I wish. Yeah, we, I was lucky enough to go. I went to 97 and 98. We played one later, but those it that blew, that was a big influence, dude. Yeah. To see all of those great bands in two days. It, the lineup's insane. Yeah. Were you there for the Colette? Yeah. I saw that live, dude. That was so crazy, man. Dude picked up the bass drum, threw it at the back of the venue, and hit a girl in the head. And it was crazy, too, because I think I forget who played next. I think it was Hot Water Music. They were pissed. Somebody was, <laughs> somebody was pissed. Somebody was pissed. Fucked up. Can't do this shit here. Like, it, was, it was a big deal, dude. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Do you see that they're getting back together for shows now? Colette? <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, they, were a big band. they were a big fucking band. I, I could see them doing big shows. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while. I think, didn't they get back together again, like, maybe 10 years, 10, 15 I, years ago? But, like... I think you're right. I think that, you're right. I think like, these like, were one-off type shows. Like, I don't know yeah. if it was... Yeah, because yeah, Tony was in my team in, like, a couple interviews and stuff talking about it. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. I saw them a bunch of times with them. They were great. Yeah, they're they're an incredible band. Were you a big Zayo fan? That it's fun. I never was a Zayo fan, but we jumped on Neil Perry jumped on a Zayo show. Like so, Zayo. Remember, they were huge back then, yeah. right? Enormous. Like the whole VFW hall, we sold out. Be like five hundred people. Yeah. We jumped on a show one time for that. They did not like us. <laughs> they were not them. It never really it didn't really work all the time, you know. When you do the crossover thing, like if yeah. you were kind of from that scene, and then you play with like a real hardcore band, they just ne didn't get it, you know. Yeah, it's, it's weird because one of the members was in Creation is Crucifixion. Oh, I love them. Yeah, so like, them. yeah, that Dude, band was so cool. Band. The whole the whole hacktivist thing mm. that was so cool. You know, every band. Every band at that time kind of had their thing, like Ink and Dagger, right? One of my favorite bands of all time. Like that first Ink and Dagger stuff. Mm. Can you beat that shit? Yeah, it's so good. Can you beat it? I, I don't think you can no. beat it, dude. It's, it's so, so incredible. You know, so they had their vampire thing, right? And then Creation had their like weird computer hack thing. Like, everybody kind of had their thing. I always thought that was so rad. Yeah, yeah. Like, doing their own kind of vibe on it, you know? It's yeah. It's pretty cool. Definitely. Did you see, did you see the uh, talk I did with the three guys from creation no it's, it's, no, on, the, it's on, I, it. I gotta it's see on, that it's on youtube that had to be interesting yeah it would the the audio kind of sucks because it was like a three-way oh, okay. it's like my audio was kind of wonky but you can hear all those guys like talking like all about the the band and all that okay stuff. i gotta watch that because it was kind of a mystery like they played a lot of shows but nobody really knew you know like what was going on with any of the computer stuff? Like they were like they were hackers, you know what I mean? It was yeah, fucking yeah. so cool. Yeah. What a cool band that was. Like, that's the thing that I take away from that time. Is like there's so much cool shit going on. Everybody kind of had their own vibe yeah. on, on what everybody was doing, you know. And that that's the cool thing. You know? Yeah, and that's why I always that's why I always tell you like through text and stuff. It's I love doing this because. You know, I'll mention a band, and then someone like you or whoever wa is watching this will be like, "Oh shit, I forgot about that band." Yeah. Then they'll go back and listen to it, and they'll 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 remember that time oh, that yeah. it was special for them, oh, and they and they're like, "Oh my god, thank you so much for mentioning this band. I went back and listened to it. It meant so much yeah. to me then." Like, yeah, and it's hard to remember all this. Stuff. I mean, it was a long time ago, but also like I'm bad with with years and when things happen, but it's just crazy. You don't want to forget about it you know i mean and you know what's amazing a lot of almost everything's on youtube now like yeah. almost every show i guess people were just filming vh remember when like people were doing the vhs you were trading vhs tape back in the day yeah, yeah. i guess people that had that just put that on youtube eventually so now everything's on youtube yeah yeah <laughs> I, I mean the first thing i started recording uh was like me and my friend joe his his parents had like the big ass uh You'd put the VCR tape in the camcorder. Oh, it was, that's how big it was. Yeah. It was like yeah. it was super heavy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was so heavy. It was like in '88 we we started that's recording. Crazy. Uh, that's crazy. We did. 
Killing Time, and we did uh, Murphy's Law at the Channel in Boston. In 88? In 88, yeah. Oh, shit. And, and, and then I think the next year we did Biohazard there. Oh, um, shit. And, and so that's what got me started videotaping. And then after that, I didn't have a, a, a camcorder till, you know, Fuckfest was like, what, like I had just got my yeah. camera maybe a couple months before then. And what then once I got the... Was it like 2001, you think? Fuckfest, I think it was, was it? Was it 99? It, it might have been 99. Yeah, I'm, see, I'm so bad with years. So, okay, so 99, wow. That's pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it, it might have been 99. Maybe, I don't know, but uh, that's when that's when I just started. That's when I started on a tear and I started recording everything. That's so. So every most of the times when you went to the shows, you were recording. Yeah, that's sick. That's so cool. I mean, I, I see all like the old New York hardcore shit. Like, how did people bring video cameras into those shows? You know what I mean? Like '86. It's like criminal. <laughs> Where's about to be like? Hey. Yeah. So that's sick that you did it. That's sick that you did it. It's it's not easy to fucking worry about. I mean, it was a pain in the yeah. ass too because literally, if you're holding it, it, it's not like an an iPhone when you're holding it like right. this. It's like literally, uh, like that's why the video I switch hands because my hand gets so tired <laughs> holding it like this. You know what I mean? So it's all like crazy for a moment, and then it's, yeah. it's shaky until I get like that's, stable. That's so funny, and then you gotta find like a good spot where you can hear it and see everything. Yeah. So yeah. It, it is a pain. We record. I think we filmed some of the Wilkesbury fest. I think we had a camera at that. Oh no, kidding! I now, think some of that's on there. Now, do you have any of the, like, uh, did you keep any of, like, the old flyers or, the like, old shirts or, or all I your have, I have a good amount of shirts. I, you know what I have? I'm going to post it on Instagram. I have a million patches. The patches were the shit back in the day. Yeah. Like, the patch game is done. I, I don't know. What's up? The yeah. patches were the shit. I love the patches. Yeah, everyone had patches. A bunch of patches, a bunch of flyers. My dad brought a bu bunch of stuff over recently. So uh, he was literally like lost in the attic, and he brought it over. So I got I got to post some stuff. Yeah, because I mean, everybody looks for like old flyers. Uh, you don't see a ton of Neil Perry flyers, and I know yeah. there's like a million out yeah, there. Yeah, that is weird. I wonder why. I wonder why that is. I mean, we played a million shows. I mean, I think the tours probably were were word of mouth, like you know the Midwest shows. I don't know if they made flyers and stuff, but there weren't a lot of people at the show, so maybe that's what it was. But that is really interesting. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah. I, I had I had a huge stack, but I, I I taped them on like I used to work in a warehouse, and I taped them all on the wall, and then like <laughs> they just like all fell apart, and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I was like, Shit, yeah, exactly. I just wasted like two hundred flyers on the wall. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I had all that shit on my wall like in high school, and I ha I kept all those, but it was the same shit. They got holes in them. And yeah, yeah. You don't think to keep any of that stuff at the time. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have all physical. You have all physical copies of like yeah. all the like records uh, and stuff yeah. that you did. Yeah, almost everything. Yeah, not everything, but I again, I should have just made it a priority to keep everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, I'm thinking it'll be around. I'll find it. I mean, you yeah. know, you know, who who's gonna even care about this shit in like two years? <laughs> yeah, honestly, you know. Yeah, but I mean, like I said, lineage is is going for ninety dollars so, uh, a, a pop on on discogs. It's, it's that's so crazy. There was a discussion about reprinting or pressing that originally on vinyl, which yeah. I don't know if that if anybody even really wants that. But um, there I'm is sure, talk about doing that. I'm sure people really? would want that definitely. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. Is is vinyl still super popular? It's getting back to yeah. Okay. The yeah, I know. Mind blowing. I know Seth reprints old stuff seth from uh funeral diner reprints old stuff. He, he had just done the have you seen the reversal of man re repress that he did like the discography no. No. oh hold on I, I might have it hold on cool so he just did he just did this oh. and that's the discography this is the discography and it's like look at this look at this layout he did it's incredible wow so it's like, and he's got, you know, like it folds out. There's like a bunch of, like, it's a big pamphlet in there. That's um, it. So, I think it's, how long ago did that come out? Uh, uh, this came out maybe a year ago. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna bring it with me real quick. Like, he, what is he pressing? Like, 2,000, 10,000? I'm not sure the numbers, but he sold out in like I mean that's what I'm saying. If if lineage 
came out, it would sell out in a minute because these sold out like quick. And then he had to do a second repress of it. Weird. That's cool. I, yeah, I mean, I think actually, I think it was Seth that contacted us about doing it. Oh, he did. I, I honestly, if you guys put that out, it would. I I know it would sell out. What about CDs? Like, is there any desire to reprint CDs? Like, would people do people? People don't want CDs now, right? Uh, it's all streaming. I think uh, <laughs> it's weird. I, I think the older, I think the older people like CDs. I love CDs. I have a shit yeah. ton of CDs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dima, Dima says Dima says fuck CDs, but I love CDs. <laughs> he's a vinyl dude, probably a hundred percent. He's probably got a crazy crazy collection but yeah i would like again like with the spotify thing and the vinyl like i'd like to get as much out there as possible yeah that, that would you be know? awesome I mean, people are stoked I, I think we should do that you know Vinny says St stop uh teasing <laughs> <laughs> no i need to like the spotify thing is a little bit of a problem what do you think would be more important um i think the, the first? i think the streaming would probably be key for everybody just uh you know what i mean yeah uh, like to get it out there. like all the neil perry stuff um you know every every hot cross thing that has you haven't put on yet um the now is on there i don't know who put that on but that's on spotify well, what is the this now uh, oh the, i think i think andy's stuff is on there i think andy put all his releases on there i'm pretty sure yeah yeah so the now is on there um i'm not sure if superstitions of the sky is on there i'm not i don't think it is um yeah and, I'm not sure, actually. I gotta check. Yeah, yeah. So that would be that would be perfect. And then, like I said, if you did if you work with Seth, I think that would be amazing. I think people would be dying because, like, like I said, some people want the physical copies of Lineage, and you can't get it now. And if you put it on vinyl, it did yeah, a sick uh, layout. I think that would sell crazy. Yeah, I think it would be really cool to see. Chris always did all the artwork for Neil Perry, and I think it would be really cool to see what he would do now. That would be really really cool. I mean, I'm sure Dave would would True. put put it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good fuck, man. That's a good question. I maybe maybe I gotta talk to Dave about that tonight. I gotta talk to Dave, make a deal. <laughs> gotta work out the contract. <laughs> you got the digits coming my way. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, I gotta do that. That's cool. That's cool. I'm gonna make that a priority for y'all. There it is. There it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Seth, Seth's repeater or Dave? That that's yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, either one would be great. Either one would be great. I I never knew Seth, but I think he knows the guys from Welcome to Play Gear because I think they did funeral, did shows with funeral that yeah, everything. Yep, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I recorded a, a show with Welcome to Play Gear and and uh, Funeral Diner. Yeah, no. Brian Brian oh, really? did it in Connecticut. Yeah. Oh shit! Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Portraits of Portraits of the Past is like the best band probably from any of this. When you say, I mean, do you like? Do you I, love that record? Love it. I, it's awesome. It's it's just timeless. It's so good. It's the it's the record, I think. Yeah. So I, you know, once they were associated with that band, forget it. That's the, that's the crazy thing about those those type of bands and well and like Welcome to Plug Gear. It's like they were so short lived that yeah. you just want more. You know yeah. what I mean? You just want more. Yeah. That, well, that's the thing I, I do think of now. You look at it like I didn't know Hassan was only around for like a year or something. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. And, and all those things lasted a short time. You know, I mean, Neil Perry was around for four years, and that felt like a long time. Yeah. You know, it really did. Well, here's the one thing I would really like to. I got to talk to Greg. I want to try to get all the level playing stuff on yeah. Spotify. Yeah, you know, that would be amazing. Difficult that would be. I would love to do that because there's some amazing records on that. On that label yeah, that people can hear. That, that like, label made classic so, shit. So so much to me. Yeah, like I mean, the that Malibu record, the Malibu record, the that Malibu record, record is oh, unbelievable. Yeah. That record is unbelievable. It's one of the best records I've ever heard. Yeah, so good. Yeah, um, Forstella Four. What? Yeah, so Don't good. Come like these records are phenomenal. You know, so got to get it up there. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Definitely. Now, is the, the Greg on Instagram or no? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I, 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 well, I'll probably see him next couple months or something. We'll probably get together. But he, he probably looked at me like I was crazy with that idea. But I think it would be cool. I think the music warrants it, you know. And I, I think he did some amazing records. Yeah, you know? yeah. Really yeah. amazing stuff. I have people ask me to, to try and get Greg on, on a talk. But I'm like, honestly, I don't think he's like – 
viable on on yeah, social media. I, that would be interesting. I don't know if he would do it. I could I could give I could ask him, but I don't know if he would be interested in doing it. Uh, but he that would be the guy to talk to because he he really he was the main man. You know, he was like the guy really yeah, for yeah. that. I would just love to talk talk you know um talk about level playing and, yeah. and you know, stuff like that how how he created it and how you know. yeah yeah i mean i know he was like the, all those guys went to nyu like all the station guys mm -hmm. so they met at nyu and he basically just i think it was to put out the Seisha stuff and then he just kept going yeah you know um but you know he put out go look at the catalog I mean, oh, it's, it's amazing. So amazing. Good record, and it's so eclectic, you know, like one in radio. It's just so much that off minor um, and the resurrection split. Incredible, incredible record. Yeah. So many records. And same with Andy. Andy put out some incredible stuff, too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, me too. Huge, huge fan. Um, Josh, I don't want to take too much of your time today um no, awesome, i just man. want to thank you again so much for doing this i missed you so awesome. much and no, I, was no, so amped. I was so amped that dave like linked us together uh yeah. just just yeah. like texting back and forth and just shooting the shit with you yeah. like off off of this you awesome. know what i mean it means a lot to me that's, that's um, so cool me too me too it's it's always it's great to reconnect especially you have so much passion about it and and so do i still so we definitely got to keep keep in touch on the text for sure. Oh, so definitely. I, I appreciate it, man. This has been a lot of fun. It's kind of a trip to talk about it, but it's awesome. It's cool. Yeah. And now uh, the podcast that's coming out with you and Dave, um, wh where where can people hear that? Or, or That's a good question. I'm sure on – I think it's going to be on his site, and then he's – I think he's going to do YouTube too. Yeah. And, and basically we kind of like I'll, – I'll bring a, a, something that – a record that I'm enjoying from back in the day, and he's going to bring something newer, and we're going to kind of compare and contrast and kind of talk about it. So it's kind of cool. Hopefully, yeah. you know, hopefully people like it, but it's fun. I love Dave. He's a, he's a smart guy, so it, it should be fun. If you like any of these bands, check it out. Yeah, Dave says April on Bandcamp and YouTube. Oh, yes. See, he's all over that shit, man. Yeah, he he's is. Good news, you know? He's yeah. all over that shit. He's oh, the man. He's the man. He's the man. Set, you know, we got a premiere set. <laughs> so yeah, no, dude, dude, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate all the support and um, yeah, whenever I want to do another one, we should, we should hook up. Just yeah, you and I, no audience. Just yeah, 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 like <laughs> yeah, de definitely. Um, I'll also be putting this on YouTube, so if anybody's awesome. interested in watching this, um, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be up on uh, Instagram for a little bit, and then I'll probably shift it right to YouTube. Awesome. Um, so if anybody wants to, uh, thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. Um, and Frank, Frankie, what's up? Uh, it, it's so awesome cool. to see all the homies so in cool. here too. You know? It blows me. I haven't talked. I haven't seen or talked to these dudes in like twenty years, so it, it's it's truly amazing. It's been the best thing about this whole thing is just reconnecting to everybody. You know, it's it's so cool. It's so so cool. Yeah, D Dima gave us some hearts. Like, I haven't seen that dude in so long. Like, I gotta go see Red soon. So yeah, I gotta see him soon. I'm hoping Reds will come up to Bo at least Boston. You know what I mean? I yeah. yeah, I need to talk to them. I need to talk them into do another LP. That's what I need. Yeah, to do. I want to record them again. I, I love the band. I think it'd be incredible. Yeah, I think they, be don't, incredible. they don't get enough. Uh, you know, no, they're it's, it's super underrated band. That record is so good. Evan, the singer, is the man. I mean, the lyrics are great. Like literally, like the first second I heard that dude singing, I'm like, oh, this is it. it this is it. This is, this is the guy. Dima, He's says the guy. Got, Dima says they got new tunes. Ooh, look at Japan. Yeah, this guy's in Japan too much. You got to come back to the U.S., come to Jersey, and we'll do it right. We'll do it right. <laughs> All right, Josh. I'll, I'll let you go, but I, I love you, man. And uh, yeah, you too, stay in man. touch, and thank Definitely. you so much. And, Definitely. Uh, any, you, need so anything, you need anything, and if you're ever coming to New Hampshire, hit me up. I'll, 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 I'll put you in the right direction for sure. Definitely. Definitely. I'm, and, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up to New England probably this year, so I'll hit you up about that. But we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch with the text. Hell sure. yeah! All right. Buddy. All right. Um, have, have a good, good have a good day. Right, buddy, talk to you soon. See, See you guys. Rob.